Welcome back to Citizens Forum, being filmed on Wednesday, September the 18th. Uh, the guest in this segment is old friend Hendrik the Pactor. We're going to be talking about a couple of issues. And Hendrik, you wanted to start it off uh, talking about Fukushima. Yeah, thank you for the invitation. Uh, I appreciate it, Jack, because uh, the last time you invited me, uh, I uh, predicted that there would be uh, a slim majority NDP government. So in light of that disastrous comment, I really appreciate you extending another invitation to me. Uh, when you invited me, uh, the things that I've been preoccupied recently uh, with are uh, Fukushima and uh, the uh, metastasis of the oil pipelines in Canada. And with regard to Fukushima, the thing that was interesting to me is that uh, we've seen the world uh, become galvanized with regards to the situation in Syria. And certainly uh, the use of sarin gas, whether it be by uh, the Assad regime, which is likely, or by the rebels, which is possible. I would disagree with you on that. I'd say it's the rebels, probably, and the U.S. directly, but we can disagree on that or I, agree. I stand, I stand ready to be educated. Yeah, so do I. Uh, so uh, what fascinates me is that as horrible as these events are, we have a, a blooming and ongoing uh, disaster unfolding with Fukushima and a, uh, a fairly unresponsive Japanese government which only in late August has stepped in to take over the recovery and remediation uh, plans that TEPCO, the Tokyo Electric Power uh, Corporation, was supposed to uh, take care of with regards to Fukushima. We know now that somewhere between 10 and 30 percent of the radiation released by Chernobyl has been released by uh, Fukushima. So that's quite a disaster. Now how already. do we know that? Because I don't know how bad Chernobyl was, but it was a massive disaster. I think this is, this could be equally bad. That we, Do we have any numbers? I mean, it's we, a nightmare. Th the numbers that I have read is that what they have detected so far amounts to about 10 to 30 percent of what was released by Chernobyl. In and my where opinion, are you getting that information from? public uh, information sources uh, that I've Googled and uh, uh, the, the, the numbers that I've seen vary between 10, 20 and 30 percent. Are those so official, or governmental uh, or alternative? I, I would be speaking off the top of yeah. my head if I said I just which don't, one. I mean, you just my don't concern know is that anymore. if this is the, uh, the beginning of an endless process of release of contaminated waters, because finally TEPCO has confessed that 300 tons of polluted groundwater that come into contact with the coolant system every day are being released into the ocean. Once it's released into the ocean, it's water. It spreads. It invariably spreads. And we already see uh, off the coast of California fish being caught with higher levels of cesium and the uh, federal government in the United States agreeing to allow uh, 1,200 becquerels of, of radiation in the food sources from Japan when the Japanese are restricted from selling any foods that have 100 becquerels. So you mean the safety level in Japan is 100 becquerels? Yes. And in the United States? It's, 12, it's become 1,200. 1,200. And in Canada? For Japanese uh, products. I don't know what it is in uh, Canada, but what I do note is that no one seems to be talking about what is clearly a global problem. Uh, it's global in that it's not restricted to Japan. It's spreading into the Pacific Ocean. We are a Pacific nation. Uh, and slowly and inexorably, uh, this pollution is spreading across the ocean via the currents. Helen Caldicott has written that uh, the, uh, the toxic plume which floats above the water should be reaching our shores uh, by the beginning of next year. And while uh, it doesn't mean we should all be moving uh, to uh, Ontario and Quebec, it certainly is a question as to what kind of effort the Canadian government is taking to protect the citizens on the West Coast. And furthermore, what kind of global, coordinated, United Nations-led action is, is occurring in order to address this catastrophe? And what, a, what grieves me is that I see nothing, really. I see, finally, 
the Japanese government stepping in because TEPCO is completely inept. Uh, TEPCO was inept in terms of its design of the, uh, of the reactor. TEPCO was inept in terms of placing it on uh, the, east, uh, the eastern shore of the Japanese archipelago, much more subject to tsunamis and earthquakes. And uh, they were inept in terms of designing the backup systems by placing them in the basement. Japanese scientists warned TEPCO of the possibility of damage in the event of a tsunami. And what they did is they built a bigger steel door, which was completely ineffective. Had uh, they put this uh, emergency equipment on the top of the structure, they would not have had uh, the meltdown that occurred. So uh, it's, uh, it's just a series of continuing uh, mishandling of design and response by TEPCO and by the Japanese government. And I would say also by the American government and General Electric because... General Electric the, was the designer. U, yeah, and the U.S. plays a huge role in Japan. They destroyed them in the war and they took over, so... Uh, well, be that as it may, uh, another issue, the Japanese I mean. government is the Japanese government and it has prime responsibility and it shocks me that they've been very defensive and closed-minded and they haven't invited the international community to work in solidarity with uh, the Japanese government and try to solve this global crisis. Uh, it seems that the uh, air currents and water currents flow this poison out from Japan towards the rest of the world and maybe they feel that uh, they are going to escape the worst, although the problem of removing uh, the rods is so great that one minor slip up and we'll have an explosion equivalent to, I've read, again I can't cite the source, 12,000 Hiroshima's and uh, two of those were enough, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, uh, to scar the psyche of the, of the world. Um, this would be an unprecedented disaster that would affect the entire northern hemisphere and of course cancer rates would, would spike. Uh, tremendously. So I'm just puzzled. To put it mildly. I'm just puzzled that the world would uh, say our priority is uh, Syria when there's a much greater threat to humanity uh, in the, the possibility of, Hiro of uh, Fukushima, I called it Hiroshima, uh, of Fukushima uh, not being addressed uh, globally. It is an amazing situation because We've watched it for the last two and a half years now. That's right. Our media has been completely silent on the issue. Right. There's simply nothing. Mm -hmm. The government has, as far as I know, I heard the Canadian government stopped testing. I've heard the Canadian government's safety regulations on food that is con radioactively contaminated is once again much higher than the levels in Japan. Mm -hmm. So food grown in Japan or from the sea that could right. not be sold in Japan mm -hmm. can be sold in Canada and you said the United States okay. and it's all being done in complete silence and secrecy it's unbelievable it's pretty shocking and uh, one wonders where uh, the opposition parties are this would be you know a reasonable stick to beat the federal and provincial governments with and yet it seems to be uh, that there's a lack of enthusiasm for addressing this question. And I wonder if it's just too big and too terrifying for even uh, ambitious opposition politicians to jump on. I don't know. Well, you could be right in that. My own take on it would be that um, they've been told by the corporate interests that run this country that... Uh, We're still hoping to make some money from uranium and, uh, right. and nuclear power. And don't you dare get in our way or we'll destroy you. Yeah, uh, the Japanese have just decommissioned their last functioning uh, nuclear plant. Uh, Germany is well on its way to decommissioning all of their plants. And so clearly uh, the future of nuclear energy is going to be restricted to making uh, radioisotopes for medical purposes and uh, if we're at all concerned about uh, the well-being of the planet and of the human species then we need to shut these down 
and Fukushima is such a clear message in that regard that again one wonders what are the impediments to uh, moving forward on this. I'm very pleased that the German people have decided and instructed their government this has got to stop and that they are uh, and the German government is listening to uh, the people. And it's well worth noting that there's no mention of this in Canada. That's you right. Know, we're not told that yeah. of, the, of the magnitude of the disaster or the response within Germany and as you say Japan has now shut down its last nuclear reactor. They went from about 50 down to zero now and it's you know, they told us that nuclear power was going to be safe. We knew from the beginning, you know, that this was a disaster, and it, a disaster waiting to happen. The corporations that run this world told us it was going to be perfectly safe, nothing could go wrong. Now we're in the midst of an unprecedented disaster, and they just don't tell us. They keep it completely secret. Uh, indeed, and the, uh, the great bugbear with nuclear energy is what to do with the waste. We have never solved that question. Uh, with Pickering, they want to uh, dig a tunnel. I think it's about uh, 1,000 meters down or 1.6 kilometers down and bury it in uh, uh, a, uh, a stratum of, of rock that is uh, not affected by tectonic shift, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But this is, this is the dreaming of, uh, of scientists who uh, are constantly revising their hypotheses in the face of new evidence. So I have no confidence that this is a solution. My science fiction solution is to round up all this stuff and fire rockets into the sun, which is a great nuclear explosion. But uh, that too would be fraught with uh, uh, terror if uh, any of these rockets would go wrong. So I, there is no solution. Now when you say deal with the waste, what are we talking about? What are We're we talking, talking about? Well, uh, right now, there are over 330,000 tons of contaminated water being stored in temporary storage tanks at Fukushima. Well, when you say contaminated, what is it contaminated It's contaminated with, with, with radioactivity, with the byproduct of the decay process of radioactivity. It's the decay process that generates heat that can boil water that can turn turbines or whatever they do. So this uh, decay has uh, a, a half-lives that uh, would uh, allow uh, this process to go on for thousands and thousands of years. So this material, which is now into the Pacific Ocean and into the air, and has blown over us already many times, it's gone around the world many times from Fukushima, uh, is deadly and is, is it small specks because I I still don't know uh, I would imagine that they are micro microscopic specks of uh, cesium-137 and strontium-90 and a, a wide variety of isotopes over a hundred isotopes uh, that are present in the Fukushima and here uh, they come. Daiichi na nuclear reactor deadly for centuries some depending of depending upon which radioactive isotope it is yeah so that's the nuclear industry, that's and the nuclear uh, industry. we've got to shut it down. Canada's a yep. big player. Uh, Harper, again, you know, it's never mentioned. It's, it's a non issue. Let's move on to something only slightly better, and that's the oil pipelines. Yeah, my interest in discussing that was to point out that uh, it seems that there's a, a huge play uh, going on, and that, uh, interestingly enough, with the exception of the Green Party, the Green Party of Canada, all the political parties support one or another pipeline and uh, all of them with the exception of the conservative party which supports all pipelines everywhere anywhere anytime all of them object to a few for political reasons so uh, Justin Trudeau opposes uh, the Northern Gateway pipeline but he's four square for Keystone XL uh, uh, Thomas Mulcair of the NDP is opposed to the Northern Gateway and the Kinder Morgan pipelines going west, but he's for the west-east pipeline to Quebec and uh, the uh, Atlantic provinces. Uh, the Minister of Natural Resources in uh, 
in the Northwest Territories is having discussions with Alaska and the Yukon in order to build a pipeline uh, going north and then west to uh, the Alaskan coast. Uh, so uh, what I see is a four-square press by, uh, by the industry and by politicians to build any kind of pipeline anywhere. They got to get it out. There's an overproduction of oil. Uh, all of the storage facilities are full. The pipelines are full. And so they need to build more in order to uh, move more product. It's very much like the crisis in China with overproduction and huge, um, uh, huge uh, inventories of product that they can't sell, which is one of the reasons why their economy is moving to a more domestic consumption model as in the West. If we can, can, if we can encourage our Chinese citizens to buy our stuff, then we can reduce our inventories and we can keep producing. So uh, I just find it fascinating that with the exception of the Green Party of Canada, all of these politicians are opposed to something uh, but for something else which invariably will mean the expansion of the tar sands and the, the truly noxious effects that it's having on the land and certainly on the First Nations in that area. And I think our great hope, frankly, is solidarity with the First Nations who are standing up uh, for protecting their treaty rights and for uh, what I would call Mother Earth, but you can say for the land and for the integrity of the land. Uh, any oil spill damages the land. Uh, and uh, we have seen... And even if it doesn't spill, we burn it. <laughs> we burn it and we create uh, greenhouse gas emissions. And uh, noxious everything. That's right. So uh, basically this toxic product needs to be left into the ground until we know how to use it wisely and we don't know how to use it wisely. I'm not saying it's not a useful product. I'm saying we haven't really mastered how to use it wisely and how to uh, take care of the uh, pollution that it creates. It would be interesting to know what the people of Canada think about, about these issues. We don't know. We're, we're never told what we think. We're only told what the oil companies want to tell us and the politicians. Henrik, well, thank you very much. Believe it or not, that was, uh, that was it. Thank you so much, Jack. Appreciate Thanks. it. Thanks very much for watching Citizens Forum this week.